Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 26th of April. As always, we have the particular updates. You can jump to anyone you care about the most. New videos this week. I dived into the brand new Entra Group Right Back capability. So what this lets me do is I can now manage the group memberships in Entra. Could be assigned, could be dynamic, could be managed with the various governance like access packages and it will write those back to your Active Directory domain services where they can be used. So it's essentially letting me shift that um, point of authority for groups to Entra, but then leverage them for those Active Directory trusting applications. Then I also looked at checking, and I mentioned this in a previous update, but now there's a new property that tells me when was the ownership changed on a disk that makes it easier and gives me more confidence to check, well, hey, a disk has been unattached for a really long time. It's probably safe for me to go and push that owner to maybe delete it. So I go into a little bit of detail on that as well. On to what's new on the networking side. So the Azure Virtual Network Manager, remember that gives me the centralized management of both connectivity, but also the security admin rules. So the security admin rules they apply before any local NSGs on the subnet or the NIC. Think of it as a funnel that traffic flows through first. Well, it's now available in all public regions. And remember, we can either allow the traffic through, which will then go to the NSGs. We can deny, kill it on the spot, or always allow. And then that traffic will always get to the target and ignore any NSGs that may have tried to block it really useful where I have mandated connectivity needed maybe to domain controllers or maintenance type services. Virtual network flow logs have gone GA. So these are really great to understand all the different flows of traffic at a summarized level without relying on NSGs being applied to, for example, a particular subnet. That means these work with things like gateways, they work with restricted delegated subnets as well. And it's very lightweight, so it scales at very large levels that gives me that insight into the flows without the particular packet detail. It also gives me insight into, well, is the traffic encrypted? And it works with those Azure Virtual Network Security Admin rules as well. So, and I did a whole video on virtual network flow logs and the encryption. And then App Gateway, Web Application Firewall Inspection Limit and Size Enforcement as GA'd. And what this lets me do is if you think about with the core rule set 3.2 and above, there's the request body inspection, there's the maximum request body limit, and there's the maximum file upload limit. I can now set those independently of each other. And also independently, I could completely disable the request body size and the max file upload size enforcements. On the database side, so Cosmos DB for MongoDB has the HNSW vector index G8. So that's the hierarchical, navigable, small wells, i.e. it's phenomenal for those vector similarity searches, which is what we use all the time when I want to compare the semantic meaning of something to data I have. We use that a lot when we think about retrieval augmented generation with the large language models. Hey, I want to find the most relevant data to add to my prompt to the large language model. Well, this is super efficient by finding that most relevant data. So it's going to scale to millions of vector embeddings. Remember, embedding is that multidimensional array that represents the semantic meaning very high accuracy, very, very fast speeds. Now you do need an M40 or above cluster because this is very uh, memory intensive. So by requiring that, it will avoid those memory issues. And then Cosmos DB for MongoDB also now has filtered vector search. So instead of doing that vector search against all of the data, think of this filtering as really a pre-filter before it does the vector search. So for example, I have a certain column that might be location. So what I could say is, hey, the location has to match Idaho. And then for the documents that match Idaho, then it performs the vector search. So I can significantly cut down the amount of traffic and the, the documents that it has to do that comparison against, which will speed up, use less resources. Cosmos DB uh, for MongoDB, semantic caching has gone GA. So if I think about 
hey, I perform these searches for my large language model and that retrieval augmented generation, well, now it's going to cache the response to that query. So if I do the vector search again, it's going to be able to return the results very, very quickly and again, save that compute resource as opposed to having to do that complete nearest neighbor, those searches again. So that will also obviously save me money when I think about using big large language models like GPT-4. Cosmos DB for Postgres SQL, remember this means it's using the Citus extension for that large scale high performance. Now it has geo-redundant backup and restore. So those backups will get replicated to the paired region. So I get resiliency from region level outages. And I could also opt to restore that backup to the paired region as well. And then Azure Cosmos DB Index Advisor has gone GA. So think of this as your kind of virtual assistant to help me understand, hey, um, how am I using my indexes? Are some of the indexes working really well for me? Am I missing certain indexes? They're saying I need to do in my prompts to improve the performance. So it's gonna help you work out what is the best indexing I should have to accelerate my performance. And then finally, Postgres SQL Flexible now has enhanced disaster recovery. So one part of this is it supports the virtual endpoints. So I get a write virtual endpoint, read write, that's my primary version. So now I can specify that endpoint in my connection strings. And also I can have a read endpoint, which I can point to a replica, or it could go to the primary if I wanted to, but I control that. So now if there's a change, I don't have to change my application because it's using the virtual endpoint that will move as maybe I fail over between my primary and my replica. And then also we now have promote to primary server. So I can easily take a replica, promote it to the primary and then switch. The primary now becomes a replica. And again, assuming I've set up those virtual endpoints, my primary like writer virtual endpoint will follow what is now the new primary and the read virtual endpoint will now point to what was the old primary. So that will just flow automatically for me. And on the miscellaneous, so the Azure Monitor agent, remember this is replacing the old log analytics agent, the telegraph extension and the diagnostic extension. Now it can upload to storage accounts and event hub like most of the other diagnostic settings. Now this is all configured using data collection rules, but now I can specify those as targets as part of that configuration. And that was it. As always, I hope this was useful. Till next video, take care.